You're likely familiar with the now infamous story of the so-called Killdozer in Granby, Colorado. Though that incident is well known and documented in numerous videos online and a full-length documentary, the concept of a makeshift tank is far from an original idea. The equally well-known Bob Semple can be seen as another example of this, albeit that was intended for military use. Still, you will find no shortage of pictures and stories online of other DIY armored vehicles from around the globe, particularly in war-torn regions where any armor is a massive advantage. Today's topic, however, is much more similar to the actions by Marvin Hemeyer in 2004, except taking place thousands of miles away in Italy. Join me as we look at the story of the Tanko and the Italian Killdozer. As cool as it might be to create your own armored vehicle using a bulldozer or other equipment, it's not exactly practical or cheap for the average person. That creative itch still needs some way to be scratched though, and today's sponsor, Crossout, can help with that. Crossout is an online vehicle shooter which allows you to create and test your own designs on the battlefield. Available for free on PC, PS4, PS5, Xbox One, and Xbox Series S or X, you can build your own improvised tank armed with anything from machine guns to chainsaws. Whether you want to battle against AI in the PvE mode or test your concepts against other players' designs in PvP, there's plenty to try. They even have a narrative-driven campaign if you want something with a little more story. I've always enjoyed games of this style since it really lets you experiment compared to real-world designs, especially when you add in dynamic damage rather than health points. So go ahead and try out the game yourself for free using the link in my description to not just start playing, but also get a free bonus just for watching this video. Huge thanks to them for sponsoring, now let's head back to Italy for our main topic. Venice is a city best known for its canals and historical buildings. These are the main reasons most would visit the area, but as we will learn today, not everyone is happy with how the region is governed. One of these groups, known as the Veneto Serenissimo Governo, or Venetian Most Serene Government, began in the 1980s, led by Luigi Fascia and Flavio Conten. Believing Venetian lands should be independent from Italy, they reportedly began hijacking radio frequencies and broadcasting their own messages in Venetian starting in 1996. Seemingly unsatisfied with this, the following year they would take action, creating the Tanko sometime prior to May 1997. This seems to be built on the chassis of an OM180NC or Fiat 690T2 truck which was heavily modified. The overall layout and unique four-wheel steering in the front match, so these seem like the most likely candidates. You may be wondering why I'm talking about this when I referred to a killdozer earlier. Just have a little patience, we'll get to that soon enough. The Tanko, also referred to by the VSG as Marcantonio Bragadina, after a Venetian military officer from the 1500s, was the first of their endeavors into armored vehicles. I was unable to find any specifics about the construction, but from the photos we can tell it was some sort of metal plating welded together. How much of the original truck survived the conversion process is hard to say, most likely the majority of the cab was removed and replaced with the armored one. We don't know the exact thickness of this armor, but most likely it would have been resistant to most smaller caliber ammunition. Reportedly, the vehicle was also armed with a World War II era machine gun as well as a flamethrower. Although I am uncertain if they carried ammo for the machine gun, according to the information I have seen, the flamethrower had no fuel, so I think both were probably just dummy weapons to deter anyone who tried to stop the tanko. Work on this truck had apparently been ongoing for nearly 10 years, with a total of 6 prototypes prior to the Tanko itself. This information is all conveniently provided on the Tanko with its license plate which reads VTMB07, with VT standing for Venetian Tanko, MB for Marcantonio Bragadina, and 07 being the tank's serial number. The seventh Tanko seems to have been the only one actually built, with the prior versions just being other designs. This could be wrong, but I have no evidence to the contrary. Regardless of previous versions, Tanko 7 was finally unveiled on the night of May 8, 1997 when members of the VSG moved into Piazza San Marco and St. Mark's Campanile. Reportedly armed with hunting rifles, the group of eight men first hijacked a public ferry which they then loaded the Tanko onto before ordering the captain to bring them to the square. 
Quickly moving in upon arrival, six of the men scaled a fence surrounding the St. Mark's bell tower before making their way to the top. Unfurling a banner which read Serenissima Republica, they then prepared for a long siege in the hopes to bring attention to their cause. These plans would quickly fall apart with the whole ordeal only lasting around seven hours before the Carabinieri, part of Italy's police force, stormed the tower and took the group into custody. Following this, other members of the VSG were arrested along with the two leaders, although they were not present that night. Despite the presence of weapons on both sides, no one was injured during this event. In the following years, most of the individuals involved were released from custody, aside from Luigi Fasia, who refused a pardon. He must have been released sometime after this, as he was later arrested again following later events in 2014. As is expected, following this, the Tanko found itself in police impound for nearly a decade until it was put up for auction in 2006. When the bidding ended, the final price was 5,800 euros, with the winners being the VSG who excitedly reclaimed their homemade vehicle. From there, the armored truck would return home, remaining there for eight years until 2014. Now we finally reach the moment you all have probably been waiting for, the Italian Killdozer. Captured by police on April 2nd, 2014, this improvised tank was part of a repeat of the original 1997 raid. With it being taken before its deployment, possibly planned for the following month on the anniversary of the prior event, it is unclear if the Tanko 2 was finished. Still, the mechanical shovel was armored up to NATO Level 3 ballistic protection with a coat of fireproof paint. Even if it was unfinished, the DIY tank would have been virtually unstoppable for the regular police force. Also like the Tanko, the Tanko 2 was equipped with weapons including a 12mm cannon as one article writes. Some articles claim it was armed with a functional cannon, with others claiming they were only cosmetic, so it's unclear which of these is the case. Likely, the latter was the case, as with the original Tanko. This was all attached to an old Fiat Alice digger in Casale di Scadosia. Following the police raid, a total of 24 were arrested along with a further 27 being searched. With most of this information coming from news reports, it's hard to say how accurate it is to reality. For example, one article claims tests using blanks fired from the vehicle were done, and also makes mention of quotes from the group referring to a total of 800 showing up the day of the planned operation, as well as plans to use sticks of dynamite. I'm more than a little skeptical of this though, as they also mention weapons procured from the Albanian Mafia, with no apparent sources aside from claiming it was taken from wiretapped conversations. From the news reports I have seen, there is no mention of any weapons with the charges mainly being for the planned attack itself. When interviewed, one of the activists had this to say. All our 24 activists did was make a tractor a bit sturdier. They were going to destroy a couple of statues of the Italian freedom fighter Giuseppe Garibaldi. Nobody here likes him, but nobody was out to injure anyone or attack any authorities. This has nothing to do with terrorism. We're not an armed group or whatever the state prosecutor is labeling us as. With the previous events not involving any use of deadly force and more being done to generate publicity for their cause, this does seem to line up with what he says. Obviously, this is a case of two opposing sides, so more than likely neither the news nor the activists are telling the whole truth. Although the plans for the vehicle and even some of the people involved are related to the original Tanko occupation, from what I can find, the VSG was not directly responsible for this copycat plot. Although as mentioned earlier, Luigi Fasia as well as Flavio Contin were arrested in connection to it, the group is now led by someone else. I haven't been able to find a specific name for the group responsible though, just the individuals involved. One article about the 2014 arrests included some photos of the original Tanko being taken by police as well, but I could not verify if these were taken in 2014 or were merely photos from the original 1997 event. If you happen to know more, please let me know because I find it quite interesting. Despite the similarity, I also can't say if the Colorado Dozer Rampage had any influence on the choice to use a digger compared to the original truck, but it is possible. With the increase of international news coverage and access to these stories thanks to the internet, I would not be surprised if there is a connection there. To my knowledge, there is no definitive proof of this though, so it could just be a coincidence, especially since armoring construction equipment is not a new concept. 
Whether you support the actions of groups like this or condemn them, it is undeniable that improvised armor will continue to play a role in movements like it in the future. I know this topic could be seen as fairly political in nature, which I try to avoid, but hopefully I did a decent job at providing an unbiased portrayal of the events. Regardless of the politics of these sorts of events, they remind us of just how influential tanks can be when unopposed. Similar to when tanks first entered warfare in the First World War, they can cause both shock and awe from their opponents, who can only watch as the armored behemoths do as they please. Obviously nothing is unstoppable, and eventually these sorts of rampages will end, but in my opinion they are still important parts of armored vehicle history. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. I hope you all enjoyed today's video. As always, a special thanks to my YouTube members who support my content, and one last thanks to Crossout for sponsoring. Don't forget to try the game out for free using that link in the description to get your free bonus. Let me know what you think of the game and the video down in the comments. I'll see you all in the next video.